Work on the new boat continues. We are replacing the standing rigging two cables at a time. The old standing rigging is rod rigging, and according to the ship's logs, is at least several decades old. We are taking many trips up the mast in the handy bosun's chair. I put my life in the hands of stainless steel, Robbie, and rope. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's, it's arm steel and Solid. As we put the two new cables on, I check out the spreader tips and admire the two beauties from above. The baby shrouds fit easily enough, but peeling away some old tape reveals the fact that we'll have to carve out some new spreader ends eventually. A typical outcome of moisture, aluminum, and stainless steel mixed together. Bay. We love to hear the stories of all those other folks out on the water making it happen. Hi, I'm Margo. Um, I live on uh, this sailboat with my husband Francis. At the moment it's called the Pacific Eagle, but we're changing our name soon. And I am making a vegan uh, fettuccine type sauce for some mac and cheese that I'm making. The two main factors are that rents are too high in the Bay Area and I had a job here and we couldn't find anywhere that was really suitable to live. Um, and then also that uh, Francis, my husband, has always been involved in sailing and has always wanted to get a big beautiful boat like this of his very own. So I think those are the two main reasons that I've kind of fallen into this like, very unusual lifestyle. Do you find it's unusual? Do you think it's, there's something? I think I'm crazy. Yeah, it's a little unusual. Everything's a little bit more challenging. You want to do laundry, you have to load up the laundry in waterproof bags in your dinghy and then get them to shore. You want to go to work in the morning, but like, you've only got one dinghy today, so you need to coordinate both people, like, have, it's mostly like the aspect of getting to shore. Yeah, living in a small yeah. space with your partner, I mean, we've got a dog and a cat, so that also makes things more challenging. It's very hard to keep the place clean. Um, yeah. So it's hard to have personal space, and even if you're at a dock, you're probably working on the boat, which takes up a lot of your free time. But living on the anchorage, like, getting to and from shore is like a very unnatural thing for humans to do, so that's, that's challenging. There is a bit of like a historical thing here because the bay, people have always lived on boats in this particular bay too. Well, there's like a sense of freedom and purpose that comes with this lifestyle. So, I mean, working on the boat and creating this lifestyle and planning our journey around the world has made like much more of a team of my husband and I than I think we would otherwise be and I think than that most couples are. And it really gives you a sense of like, there's no, there's no like room for existential questions of like, what am I doing with this phase of my life? Like, oh, well, I'm working so that I can get my boat ready to go sailing and we're going to yeah. sail around the world. Yeah, you always have that goal. Next five yeah. years, it's like goal is set, you know? Yeah. So that, that is a, that's a big thing. So you mentioned your goal. Well, we want to sail around the world. Not completely circumnavigate, because I don't think we're going to end up in California again, but to um, at least get to like England or New York okay. going west. Yeah. And we're going to do it over the course of many years, and we're going to take our time and really spend time in the places where we land and work our way as we go along. So it's not going to be like a quick circumnavigation, it's going to be like our lives for the next couple of years. As you say, it's very uncom uncommon for people to live on boats, maybe in terms of general population, but you're not alone. I feel like. That's exactly us too. Yeah, we have the same kind of thing where we're like, mm, we don't want to just sail around the world and boom, 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 like really fast or anything. It's like, I think you need it's a, a lifestyle. Lot of money to do that anyway. Like, if you're yeah. not stopping and working along the way, you have to have like investments or something. And people do it all different ways, but yeah. I don't think that's uh, going to be a possibility for us. <laughs>
Margot's husband Francis is also like Robbie and I, frantically acquiring new rigging for the boat. The first step is to determine just exactly what needs to be replaced. And then we put these blue lines when we're already done with that one. So we don't do them twice. And then comes the length check of the cable and the swaging. These swaging dies press the fittings onto the cables. This will be the thickness of our forestay and our backstay. This wire is almost as thick as my finger. Where's the leak? Everywhere. The leak is this whole thing. This is daily life on Richardson Bay. This is how I get my exercise. What's up, YouTube? Up, there you go. Money shot. Okay, now that the boat's empty of water, time to fill it with air. And burn calories while you do it. I baked this one earlier. This is our friend Joaquin, working at South Beach Riggers. I'm really ate all day. What's your favorite thing about living out on the bay? All the cool people I meet. Like, when I'm hanging out with everybody I know on, on Richardson Bay, I'm the only American there. It's freaking crazy. Robbie's French or something. <laughs> and Justina's Canadian or something. Francis, I'm pretty sure, is British. The hardest thing about living on Richardson Bay is the fact that my dinghy is always deflated and full of water. Yeah, it's simple living. You know, it's like camping, basically. I sleep in a sleeping bag, I cook on a cooking, on a camping stove. It's like camping all the time. It's like camping, but that's your life. Yeah. I've been living on this boat for about a month. Robbie, you helped him move in? Yeah, the new but needed to know how to anchor. Yeah, show him the good spot you set me up with. Look at that. Close to shore. Close to shore, good neighbors. Studio. Yeah, studio apartment. Water, waterfront studio. Waterfront, water backyard, water side yard. Which they're probably gonna remove if no one attends to it soon. It is freaking crazy. So this is a Santana 22, uh, built in 1967. It's got a terrible paint job right now. This is a racing boat. That's my plan, is to race it uh, next summer. This rigging, it's old and tiny and it's gonna get replaced and upgraded. Let's check out inside. On off switch, as I promised. This is my sink. Here's the stove. It's hella dirty. All right, now let's check out the gym. Pump out about 500 of these every night. Each arm, 500 each arm. Um, what let's else? not talk about that <laughs> Okay, now let's check out the main bedroom. Here we are in the main bedroom. Here's my uh, walk-in closet. Here you have nice crunchy sails. Super fresh. One of the things I'm most excited about with this boat. Check out my freaking halyard, yo. The winch is so small. They should make like little mini little golden winches you can put on like. Joaquin has also been nice enough to help us with our re-rigging. He volunteered to head up the mast and take some measurements. What's with the tiny little shackle? <laughs> this is so tiny. 
course, as is tradition, one only goes up the mast when there is at least 20 knots of wind blowing. There you go. the measurements on the mast went so smoothly though. We'll have to replace the metal plates behind some of the fittings that were smaller when they were rod rigging and now too big when they're going to be cable fittings. I just love making the boat dry. I love putting in windows. I love it. So once again, we find ourselves resealing windows in the same way that we did on my way because the windows that were on here, pretty much, they just sucked. We went and we bought some polycarbonate plastic cut to the shape of our windows. We went and we picked up four smaller windows for the ones that were the uh, opening port, port lights, port lights, port hatches, port, port holes. Yeah. Portholes. Portholes are the ones that open, I think. The port light is one that doesn't open. We, we've done a couple of things differently than when we did them on my way. We learn from our experience. Number one is that we put tape in, instead of having none last time, and that is a lot different, a lot cleaner. And two, we used soap. Yeah, we used, but, some, we used some soapy water this time to smooth it off. Yeah, which is great. What was the third thing we did different? The third thing is we didn't tighten them as much. So we're pros this time. The windows won't leak. Not that they leaked on the other boat.
We have one screw missing. Great. What are we gonna do? We're gonna look scavenge around. Merits of keeping old stainless steel. It's perfect. Is it? Yeah. You know, the difference is that it's a different threaded bolt and it's a flat end. Not so bad. Lots of classifying areas, not so bad. Yeah, the end result, not too bad. Waterproof. memory for put the off cuts of the mattress underneath so we got double the layer. Sinks you in, it's great. So we have now officially moved on to our new big boat. We took everything off of my way and it exploded onto the new big boat, taking up a lot more room than we thought. Because you're fancy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh